Hi everybody, it's Susan from Sunrise Quilt Studio and today I'm starting a new project. This is going to be a Christmas table runner and it's going to involve four 12 inch blocks and a pieced border and it will measure 53 by 17. Now you can adjust this to uh, make it longer or shorter by the number of blocks you use and the size of the border that you make. So you can make it larger, you can make it smaller. Um, you can use different blocks in it if you want to. So it's a pretty versatile pattern. So I hope you'll stay with me and I'll show you how to make this Christmas table runner. Okay, I am getting ready to make a table runner. This is going to be a Christmas themed table runner. Uh, I like to make a quilt at Christmas time but um, I don't think I'm going to have time to do that this year so I'm going to settle with a table runner and then hopefully make a couple of small projects along the way. Maybe some uh, placemats and maybe some pillows things like that. But this table runner is using four blocks and they're all the same block and this block is called Love in a Mist and it's um, a 12 inch block and it uses square and a square units and half square triangles in single squares. So if you want to do this project you can use any 12 inch block you want to use. You can mix them up and use four completely different blocks or two different blocks and you can make it with any size block you want. It's just your measurements are going to be different. So I have a layer cake here. This is Jolly Good by Basic Gray for Moda and here is the skew for you if you want to see if you can find that. I bought that this spring so I don't know if it's still in stock or not. Um, it may have been sold out so you know just used any any uh, fabric that you want. This is good for scrap fabric too and this isn't going to use the whole layer cake. It's going to use each block is going to use three squares. So here are the squares I'm going to use for my first block. I've got a red which will be my corner units. This one here is going to be the center and then this green one is going to be my square and square units that go on the sides. So that is my first block. And then I'm going to make two red and green blocks and then I'm going to do two blue blocks. So they're going to use different fabrics too. So let's see if I can find those. Okay I went ahead and pulled the other fabrics so you can see those. For my other red and green block I'm going to use this red dot and this green here and then the center piece will be the same as this block. I'll use this one here. So I'll get two pieces out of that. So this block will have these free three fabrics in it. And then for the blue and white blocks they're going to share the same center too. They're both going to use this as the center and then one block will have these two fabrics. So we'll have that. And then the other block will have these two fabrics. So we'll have, have this look here. So we've got four blocks to do and as you can see this you still have a lot, lot left over and I am going to use some of those for the border. So we'll be cutting pieces from them and um, then we'll still have more left over so we can make other projects from this. So I hope you'll stay with me and we'll get started making the Love in a Mist block. Okay to get started on the Christmas table runner we need to make four Love in a Mist blocks. So here are the fabrics that you're going to need for one block and I'm um, just giving you the, the, the measurements for one block, the number of pieces for one block I should say because you're, you can make these all out of different fabrics which is what I'm going to do. So if you want to make every single block the same then you'll need to multiply these numbers by four. But for the Love in a Mist block for piece number A you're going to need four three inch squares. For B you'll need four two and a half inch squares. 
For C, you'll need four four and a half inch squares. D will be one four and a half inch square. E is four three inch squares, and for F, you'll need 24 two and a half inch squares. And you need to draw diagonal lines on the wrong side of the E fabrics on 20 of the F fabrics. So all but four. We'll need a line drawn on the wrong side. So I'll adjust the camera and we'll get started sewing. Okay, we're gonna start by making half square triangles and we'll need the A and the E fabrics for this. Okay, I have drawn my lines on the wrong side of the E squares and we're gonna put them right sides together. And you're probably hearing my dog in the background. She's in here with me again today. And we wanna stitch a quarter inch away. So I need to change my foot. I have on the foot that came with this machine. This is the, the vintage foot. So I'm gonna switch over to This is the, my modern quarter inch foot, and this is a singer foot. It comes with a snap-on lower there. Okay, let's sew a quarter inch away on both sides. And I wanna just chain piece all of these together to speed things up a bit. Okay, and I'm going to cut these apart. Just like that. And now I want to cut on that drawn line. So I have two half square triangles out of each set of squares. And then I need to press and trim down to two and a half inches because these will be closer to two and um, maybe five eighths. So they're going to be just a little bit large. So anyway, here are the half square triangles. Now there's different ways you can trim these down. I have a clearly perfect slotted trimmer. Um, today I'm just going to press these open and then um, trim them down with just a square ruler like like this. This is a four and a half inch ruler. I'm just going to square them down to two and a half inches with this. And I'm doing that because I'm finding with this pattern, um, and especially with the fact that, you know, this is a vintage machine. It's a little bit harder to do a scant quarter inch with this machine. And so my units are turning out to be less than four and a half inches, which is what they need to be. So um, I want to keep things as close to four and a half as I can. So I'm going to do this by pressing first and then trimming down. So here they are all pressed. Now I'm going to go trim these down and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, the next thing I need to do is to make four patch units with these half square triangles. So I'm going to take these and put them into two sets of four. I'm going to face them all in the same direction. So here's one set of four and here is another set and with the camera so we can see a little better here we go okay now I need these to face each other like this at the diagonal and then in this corner I need to put the B squares so there's four B squares and here I need four F squares so I'm going to take four of them off of my stack of 24 and these do not have diagonal lines on the wrong side so those go there 
So this is what we're going to sew. So I'm going to sew them into rows. So I'll have two rows, a row of this and a row of these, and then I'll sew those two together. Okay, now I'm going to press uh, what I have here though, I'll show you. I made four sets of these and four sets of these. So now I need to put press these and then sew them together. So I'm going to press towards the solid square. So the white one on this one and the teal one on this one. Okay, so now I'm going to sew these together. And I'm just going to nest those seams together. Okay, so now I'm going to clip these apart and then press and we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so here is our corner units. So now we need to make the square and a square unit. So that will be our D and, this is the D square, this is my center. These are the C squares. And we need to sew a two and a half inch square to all four corners of these. So those are your F pieces. Now, um, if you want, you can draw a diagonal line on the wrong side, which is how I have it written in the directions. I'm just going to follow my seam tape here. And let's see if this will hold out. So I'm going to put an F square in the corner. And I'm going to sew from corner to corner, and I'm going to do a scant quarter inch. And what I'm doing is I'm following the left edge of my tape with the point of the F square. And I'm just going just a little bit to the left of that, following to the left of that um, to get me a scant quarter inch. So I'll just chain piece all of these together. Now I want to trim the outer corners off, leaving a quarter inch, same allowance. And then this is what I have when I open them up. Okay, so this is half of the square and a square unit. So I need to press these before I move on to sew on the other two squares. Because those the squares were over overlap these current squares. So I have to get everything pressed first. Okay, so now I'm ready to sew on the squares to the last two corners of each piece. So I'm going to chain piece all of these together too.
Okay, so here is the square and a square units. And now we need to lay these pieces out and we can sew them into rows and then sew the rows together to form the block. Okay, so I have all the units here, the square and square units and the corner units, and we're ready to lay these out. So I'm gonna find my center piece, which is this one, and put that in the middle, and then the other square and square units go on each side of that one. And this is where if your fabric is directional, you know, you can turn your squares however you want. Um, these prints really aren't that directional, I don't think, so I don't think it matters. I'm just going to let those go however they get laid out and then put in my corner units. And they're going to go where the color square, the print square, is going to go towards the center. So here we go. Now the hardest part about this block is matching all the points. So you've got a point here from the half square triangle needs to meet the point here of the square and a square unit. So you've got that on each one of these on the outside. And then on the center, all of these square and a square units have points that need to meet. So um, I'm gonna sew these together in rows. So I'm gonna sew the first two pieces of each two each row together and then I will add the last piece. And to get these to line up, I'm gonna take my pin, let me zoom in a little bit, and go through the point of this unit here. So where your seam lines cross, right below that is your point. And then while this pin is still in this fabric, I'm going to put it through the right side of this piece at that point. And I'm going into the background fabric. I'm not going into the print fabric here. So I'm going to line those up. And I want this pen to be perpendicular. So like that, I don't want it leaning to one side or the other. I want it perpendicular to the seam right here. Okay, and then I'm going to take it out while I'm holding everything together and then repin it. Now if I don't do that, if I left it pointed, if I left the pin in and then just slipped it under if I went like this and then just went this way, it would slide this piece up a little bit and then it's going to throw off what I've just done with matching those points. Now from this point I can match my ends and this will help with any fullness I may have between the ends and the center. And it will keep them from sliding around too. Of course you can do all these adjustments while you're sewing too. So you don't have to do all this pinning if you don't want to. But there we go and this one's ready to go. So I'm just going to lay that one back on the table and then I'm going to pin all the rest of the first two pieces. I'm going to go in to the point there and here. I'm lining up. I'm not worrying so much about the raw edges at this point. I just want these two points to be together and I want that pin to be perpendicular. Now I can worry about the raw edges lining up. And I'll pin those. And these pieces, luckily for me, they're, they came out to be the same size, so, okay. So those are ready. And I'll pin this one and then we'll start sewing. So I'm going to go ahead and sew all of these together. And then I'll add the last piece to each row. And I'll press the rows and then I'll sew the rows together. And I'll do the same thing with the pinning method. I'll pin everything together and then sew it.
Okay, so I'm going to sew the rows together and I got to pin all of these points together and there's a lot of points. So I'm going to start in the center and then work my way out to the sides. But taking the time to do this is um, a time saver actually in the end. Okay, so here is the completed Love in a Mist block. So we need four of these to make the table runner, and I'll show you the four that I have. They're all, they all use different prints. So here's the one we just finished, and here's another one. It is different than this one. It's using different prints. The colors are kind of the same, but if you look here, this, this is a star, this is a snowflake, these are flowers, and then these are like stockings and candies and little stars and swirls and stuff. So this, these two centers are the same. And then here's a red and green one. And then here's another red and green one, which is also, the centers are the same, but the colors are different. This is a snowflake. This is, um, it's got a little star in it and then dots. So I think it's supposed to be like a snowfall type thing. This is a floral and then this is, um, it's actually this print just in a green colorway as opposed to this. It's not exactly a paisley but it, it reminds me of a paisley. So I've got four different blocks and when I put these together I'm going to alternate the red and the green with the blues. So they're gonna go like this. Now I'm not going to put sash in between them because they'll be too long for my table, but if you need a longer table runner, you can add more blocks or you could add sashing uh, between them and um, do an, an extra border around them. You can make it wider too. So let me grab the pattern. Okay, this table runner with the border it's got a two inch border um, so it'll be 53 by 17 which i have a small table and right now i've got a very small table it's uh, a, it's about three by four uh, because we're at this rental and there's just no room for anything bigger and but my normal table is uh, four by six and this would be plenty big for that because i don't want the the runner to interfere with placemats. So um, this will work for that table. Okay, the next thing we need to do though is to sew the border pieces. So this is going to be a little bit different because look at this pattern. The border pieces, the border is pieced. So let me zoom in. Here we go. So the borders are pieced and there's two pieces that go on each the top and the bottom of each block and then on the two ends there will be two pieces. So these are two and a half by six and a half inch pieces so we need to cut those out of other pieces from the layer cake. So let me grab that. So you see there's lots of fabrics left. So there's lots of fabrics left ov over and I can even get pieces out of the pieces that I cut to make the blocks. So those are all, I just laid those right on top. So they're all right here. So I can use those and then I can cut into any of these pieces. And what I need total is I will need 20 rectangles. So 20 from, it's saying to use, cut 20 rectangles from 20 different 10 inch squares. So you can have um, a different print for each one. So if you don't want to use any of the prints that you used in here, you know, you can go to the other pieces. So there's lots to choose from. 
and you can cut two and a half by six and a half inch rectangles and you'll sew those together and then you'll sew sew them together in sets of two and then you're going to sew those to the top and the bottom of each one of your um, squares so I'm going to go ahead and cut out my fabrics and um, then I'll show you how I'm going to sew those together okay I went ahead and I cut out my two and a half by six and a half inch strips this is the first block this will be the one on the left and so I have two pieces for the top and I have two pieces for the bottom and I have two pieces for the sides and then I went and cut four two and a half inch squares which these will go in the corners right here like that so I'm going to sew all of these into pairs and then I'm going to sew them to the blocks now the two end blocks are going to have pieces on three sides the other blocks like this one here which would be the third block is going to have just these strips on the top and the bottom so I hope that makes sense but I put each block out and I picked four pieces to go with it and laid them out and um, just wash for the block that they were going to lay against to make sure I didn't have two pieces of the same or the same colors next to each other like these two blocks will not go to each other because I'm doing a red blue red blue so um, this is this will work fine so I'm going to go ahead and adjust the camera and I'll start sewing all of these together okay so I am ready to go I'm going to do the two side pieces first and just sew quarter inch seam allowance sewing on the short ends the way I wrote the directions is to sew the strips onto the top and bottom of the blocks so this looks like this will work fine and what you can do you can pin if you want okay I'm going to press this and then I'll show it to you okay so here we go it's these I can't get the whole thing in there but here's the top and there's the bottom and I'm going to go ahead and sew the side piece on and to do that I need to sew these two of these squares onto the top and the bottom so it'll look like this so I'll go ahead and do that okay so there's that piece there we go now I'm going to go ahead and sew this on the side now I pressed uh, away from the corner pieces because I pressed these strips up so that way they will nest so now I need to make sure these seams nest together I'm going to go ahead and pin these just at these two seams Now this is the first time I've made this I haven't this is my first attempt at this so okay, so 
So here we go, there's the side. Now I'm going to go ahead and sew all the other pieces. I'm gonna go ahead and do the other end. Okay, I'm gonna zoom out a little bit so you can see a little better, but here I've got one half sewn here. Um, this is the right half. So I sewed those two sections together and then this is the left half. And that's sewn together. I just need to press the seam and then I'll sew these two sections together. It's just a little easier to manage this way. And then I'm going to sew these two together and I'm going to pin the seams, mash the points. Okay, so the table runner is done and I don't know if I can get back far enough so that you can see the whole thing in one shot, but I'm going to hold this up and, and kind of just run it through so you can see. So here's the table runner. So I'm pretty happy with it. Um, if I had to do it over, um, I might change arrangement of some of the border pieces. But other than that, um, I think it's pretty good. So, um, there we go. And this, this is one of the times that I miss having a uh, design board. I think that would have helped with this one. But anyway, I'm happy with the way it turned out. And um, I'm going to try and quilt this one on my domestic machine, on my, my vintage singer here. So we'll see how that comes out. Um, I'm, it's going to be a little bit, a couple of days before I get to that, but um, I will film the process and show that to you. Um, I'm not going to do anything fancy because 
I am not that talented on quilting on a domestic machine. I'm a long arm quilter and my long arm is still in storage and probably will be for another year. So um, until we get the new house built, it's going to stay there in storage. But once the house is built, we'll have it put up and it will, I'll have it available to use. So I'm looking forward to that. So I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please click that like button. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and click that notification bell so you'll be notified when the next video comes up. And in the meantime, I hope you're all staying safe and healthy and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. For more quilting ideas, click on the video links. And to keep up with my latest projects, click on the subscribe button. I hope to see you again soon.